And you no, know, we went that direction. Well, yeah, we did go a direction. The Mo went down. He talks about bro and his rap out hole. <laughs> Mo went down the gopher hole. Mine was more like a, you know, if, if a tornado could exist underground, I think that's kind of where this one went. Basically, what happened was Mo was like, "Hey, bro, your episode idea sucks. So I'm gonna take a whole nother direction, and I'm just taking I'm taking over the podcast. You just shake your head and say yes or no. You, you just nod and look pretty." But <laughs> where we're taking this one today is more going to revolve around leadership, which is something we said in the very first episode um, that I thought that was some direction that we'd eventually wind up at. Only took us 41 episodes to, or I don't know, only took us 40 some episodes to get here. But why the leadership route? What was some, why, why, why is this something you feel compelled that we should talk about? Well, I feel compelled because we were talking about uh, clicks, and then Mo said no. <laughs> we're talking about leadership. <laughs> no, I. What was cool is uh, we were talking about something completely different, mm-hmm. and what we found is it, the the talk the topic of a click was actually, and we could still talk about that, but we is actually part of being a leader, like allowing things, not allowing things, mm-hmm. like leading from the front to. Uh, um, you're either part of the problem or part of the solution. And mm-hmm. I think that, uh, and sometimes people are unintentionally part of the problem. Who's that? Huh? Who? Huh? I was kidding. <laughs> yeah, the blonde girl kind of jacked. Where's her hair in a ponytail sometimes? Booty shorts. Aaron. <laughs> yeah, it was Aaron. <laughs> Aaron. I just described like 97% of CrossFit females. <laughs> so yeah, you're part of the problem or you're part of the solution because leadership to me, what I thought was cool is Mo was literally, <laughs> he's dropping his knowledge because he's been doing that a lot lately. I don't know what the, I think these, don't know vi- where that's coming these from. vision quests, I think that's what they're, I, they finally have added up because I've listened to the last couple episodes and they're like, who's this guy? Like, he's got so much more room for activities. Like, you don't have to think about the military yeah. and, and everybody above him is going to tell him to do stuff he don't want to yeah, do I anymore. I don't have to wear green every day. Yeah. Like, he's, you don't have to shave. He's got, he's always got that um, five o'clock shadow now. That takes me two weeks to grow. <laughs> yeah, because it knows it's evolution. Your facial hair knows it's going to get trimmed every day so it stops growing. Yeah, pretty much. Right? No. Um. So we literally went down. Uh, he just started talking, and I'm like, I literally stopped him. I said, we just need to do an episode on this because I think what the things he says is so important that we don't get trained in leadership as owners. It's either you have it or you don't. You don't get training, period, as an owner. You don't. I Through CrossFit. But what we have found, okay, leadership yeah. and, and the business side and, and the customer service side, uh, and the training side c- can all come from other avenues, the military, mm-hmm. studying, whatever it is, trial and error. We found that. And I think that's what's cool about the leadership thing is what he said is it's something they don't give you when you pay your $3,000. Mm-hmm. It's you get the name, you get the rights to use the name, and that's about it. And it's no one talks about it. Mm-hmm. They talk about the business side. They talk about the training side and athlete side. They don't talk about the leadership side. And I think it's, I think it's pivotal. I just, it really opened my mind because you have two things that are very pivotal, but that, that third leadership. But so little time is spent on it or even mentioned. Yeah, because if you, if you have the other two and you're a poor leader, then eventually you'll start fading away. It doesn't matter how good it is. It's just how I feel about our atmosphere. Mm-hmm. We have the best uh, programming, the best trainers, but if our atmosphere sucks – no one wants to be here. Mm-hmm. So you have to have that third leg because if not, I think it does start to fade because you start losing focus on what is this? What's, re- yeah. Is this about the dollar sign or is it about them? Mm-hmm. And am I going to lead by example and go that extra mile for them? And then 
am I or am I not? And then expect them to go the extra mile for me. For me, yeah. You know, it's the, yeah, I loved it. He did he did a really good job to basically bitch slap me. And, <laughs> We're not talking about this. I mean, he could have just said it. He didn't really have to take over my podcast. No, no, that's not how our relationship works. So as you listen to this episode, things might sound no, he a doesn't, little... No, he doesn't hit me. No, I... <laughs> I mean, I have to say that because I'm on air. Because <laughs> last time I didn't uh, clarify, I got beat by Mo. So <laughs> with that being said, some of the things might sound um, a little out of sorts, but that's the reason why. And we wanted to just clear that up before we dive too far into this episode. So hope you enjoy. Um, and let us know what you think. Don't forget to leave us those five-star reviews on Facebook and on iTunes. Oh, and subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel. We got it. Hey, we got and our phone. hit the bell. We got our phone. Yes, Mo. we did. We got it. <laughs> the recording could actually happen now. Yes, it can. All right, enjoy, guys. Yep. Welcome to the One More Rep Podcast, where we take it beyond the barbell. I'm your host, Mo Dingo, and across the room for me is Bro DiMaggio. What's going on, man? <laughs> that's pretty good. I know you're you're a baseball guy. Uh, yeah, man. <laughs> hey, that's a pretty. I mean, basically, I've been. This is like my uh, 41st straight episode of dropping knowledge bombs. <laughs> this is true. Yeah, so he had a, a pretty big hit streak. I'll take uh, I'll take the knowledge bombs <laughs> as my streak. So you were a pretty high-level baseball player when you were younger? Know, I don't know if you call, what you call high-level. I was a— um, You mentioned you were going to go to college to play ball, right? Yeah, you just got to have academics, I found out. <laughs> <laughs> Who'd have thought? <laughs> uh, hitting hitting four hundred in high school wasn't just wasn't enough to get you into college. I didn't hit four hundred, but I was well over three. And uh, yeah, I. Uh, what position? Um, center field, right field. Okay. And uh, so you're fast then. Mm-hmm. Okay. It was you don't have to be fast. You have to. Well, I've never seen you sprint. I've seen you run. You know. It's about. You know, you have to have a good jump on the ball and things like that. Yeah. But and then you have to have a solid arm, obviously, to play right field. Because I think I had eight putouts. Oh, uh, damn! Um, nice and right field in my uh, my junior year. And um, but yeah, it was. Uh, I did have a hit streak. I had a twenty eight game hit streak in the summer. Nice. Yeah, I went. I didn't. I didn't go. I went all game or every game. Did not not get a hit. <laughs> it was kind of weird. I did had almost a four hundred average because yeah. of that, obviously. But yeah, that's a long streak, man. Yeah. I didn't wash my socks the whole time. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, baseball players are probably some of the most – baseball and volleyball players, I think, are the most superstitious athletes I've ever come across. Yep. And, pro- and probably weightlifters, too, I would yeah. say. I would, yeah. It's uh, it's pretty cool. But no, whatever. <laughs> Different life. Way back in the day. <laughs> um, as always, we'd like to thank our sponsor, 75 Clothing, making badass gear for your badass ventures. If you use the promo code one more rep, you will get free shipping. And on your first order, uh, if you give Wally your email, you'll get 50% off your purchase. You can't combine the two offers. We tried to get him to do that when he was on the show, but. AKA Mo tried to combine the two offers. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Why am I not getting these double dip discounts? <laughs> it's not like, uh, what's the pro- progressive insurance or whatever? Where you get the the bundling discounts, oh, yeah. You, yeah, can't you can't bundle it. Can't bundle it. Yeah, it's, that sucks. No, um, I tell you, <laughs> since uh, he came to our event, that's all I see in my damn gym, yeah. bro. So I can't wait to get our clothing order together together. So I stop seeing all the seven five. I can see some excess stuff. Yeah, I need to. Um, I actually sent to my son who's in college over in uh, Western Indiana. I sent him the website and told him to pick out some stuff. So, uh. Probably his uh, frat will be getting invaded here soon, too. I can imagine his list when you say pick stuff. That's <laughs> that's pretty vague, Mo. Well, luckily, Wally has, you know, really competitive pricing and, you know, good products. You know, I've, I'm going on probably about a, maybe two months, give or take, with the stuff that we got from that initial uh, purchase that, or, that he gave us. You know, so I've washed everything a few times, worked out and some of it reluctantly. I was very, I didn't want to do it. I know. But, I was the same way. Yeah. It's like, these are crispy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I uh, had to do it, you know, just to kind of, you know, test the waters for myself and, you know, everything's still standing up. None of it shrunk. The shape's still maintained and everything. Just good quality gear. Oh, dude. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, because we've all bought some gear from other vendors, and like you wash it once, or and event it, t-shirts, it fades. <laughs> event t-shirts. Oh, yeah, that's God. another one. I got this. This last, uh, let's see, it's been a couple events ago, pretty recent. You can see through it. Like, mm. I don't want no see-through shirt. Like, 
<laughs> I gotta hide my gut somehow, Mo. Like, I can't, if you can see through my shirt, like, and I, I never take my shirt off, anyways. I don't want you to see through my shirt, <laughs> and it was white, like a white see-through shirt. Um, wanted to take a moment to say thank you to uh, Brandon Martell. Uh, we've always talked about him several times with the the Fit United. He does a really good job of putting a lot of stuff together, the events calendar, so that way we can just kind of see what's going on in the local area. He covers stuff in Columbus, Dayton. Sometimes he's got some stuff from I've Kentucky seen, in, in there. Indiana, I've seen, yeah. Mm-hmm. I went on his calendar the other, uh, what was that? I think a week ago, because I'm trying to put something together. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was checking the local events because if I'm going to run this athlete camp or not. So I, I was checking some event dates, and it does help. Just deconflict, yeah. Yeah. But I'm, again, uh, as you mentioned in the competition episode, it's a good resource if you use it. <laughs> you know, these these freaking people. Like, I don't get it. Like, I don't – I just – I'll never understand, like, where you think that you're – first off, you would want to go head-to-head with anybody maliciously. And secondly, mm. why do you do that to athletes? I just don't know. Like, yeah. especially – uh, whatever. I mean, if one – don't make people choose. If one wins, we all win, you know. Fitness is fitness. You yeah, know? man. I, we support as many events as we actually can afford. I mean, sometimes yeah. our people are you like— You guys are very com- com- competition-heavy. I mean, because just, a, what, in May, you guys competed almost every weekend, right? Yeah, three out of the four weekends. Yeah. I think we've done, like, 10 or 12 this year or something. Mm-hmm. I don't know, something like that. And uh, the reason why I bring up Brandon is he's also got into the podcasting space Yeah, with his show, The Buckhorn Podcast. That's some random shit there, Mo. (laughs) The the way I can describe the Buckhorn podcast, I guess it's kind of like you and I, but not related to fitness. (laughs) Related to everything else outside of fitness. I know know we get random on occasion. Do they have a Jenna? No, they don't have a Jenna. Hi, Jenna. Because not not many people can afford a Jenna. Where's your beanbag? (laughs) (laughs) Um, But with his show, yeah, it's, uh, it's... I listen to it a lot at work. I have to use my headphones because it, it is not safe for work. <laughs> Jenna Cron, it's not one for you. <laughs> but no, just if you, you know, if you guys listen to us and you think about how you feel like you're just in the room chilling with us, listen to our sidebar conversations, it's definitely along the same lines. Talk about random stuff. They have some really interesting segments they do there. Uh, the one about um, with a Urban Dictionary game. <laughs> Really interesting. So, um, yeah, give him a listen. Uh, really uh, random, like you said, and local, which, and local. Yeah, yeah, which is cool. You know, we all we're all about the local stuff here, and to have another local podcast. And uh, what's Janetti doing, man? He's up to something. He's got. I, I'm not sure what I can say, but he's got some things planned uh, in the podcasting space and other you know media. I guess we can say, aside from his book that he's working on, so. Lots of interesting stuff coming out from uh, uh, Endeavor Defense and Fitness from our good friend Aaron Janetti. All right, so let's get down to it. Today's episode brought to you by the professor. Uh, where did this one come from? My head. Well, as always, but I mean, were you driving? Were you in between Actually, sets or uh, what had, where'd this come from? I was playing Xbox last night. <laughs> uh, I do. I, I, I binge. Fortnite or? No, I play Pub, PUBG. PUBG. Okay, player and, uh, underground or player on. Un- yep, player unknown underground. Okay. Yep. So, Anyways, yeah. For I, those of you that have, uh, if you have kids, teenagers, been, I, they're you, playing I, it. I've been shooting your kids <laughs> all day and talking trash. And talk, I wish I can't talk trash to them because it's because they're fourteen. Yeah. Well, no, I'm not. That's that's the that's why you talk trash, Mo. Because they're fourteen. That's exactly why. I mean, I'm like, <laughs> hey, isn't it your bedtime? I hear your mom in the background. <laughs> I'm gonna go, I'm gonna call your mom and tell on you. <laughs> nice. Yeah, dude, they cuss more than anything. Like yeah. you think, like I, I cuss. Yeah. Check out your 13 year old yeah. on uh, on game. Yes. Uh, create a Xbox Live account and and, and <laughs> yeah. tag your children. Oh and my just gosh. Sit back and listen and be prepare to clutch pearls. Be like, oh <gasps> uh, yeah, you have no idea what they talk about putting in orifices. <laughs> So playing X, benching on Xbox. Yeah, dude. On a Saturday cool. night, it was nice. It was really cool. Yeah. Uh, did the team series with Pat, and then um, binge Xbox. Mm-hmm. 
It was nice. So Team Series, for those that aren't familiar with it, because we do have some non-CrossFitters that listen. Yeah, so CrossFit, uh, last couple years, they put together this Team Series where Mm -hmm. it could be guy-guy, girl-girl, or guy-girl combinations. They have uh, open, scaled, uh, and Masters divisions, Mm -hmm. just like the open. And uh, it's two weeks. They release four workouts per week. And you have, what is it, like, like four or five days to get done mm-hmm. with four workouts. Um, so Pat's been going through a little quad issue. So we hammered one out yesterday and, you know, we did as good as we could with mm-hmm. his leg not working. So um, it's cool. I mean, I, I like I like the, the concept a lot, really. Mm-hmm. But I almost wonder if people are revolting on this because – What do you mean? Well, uh, I went into the world page right uh, last night. Okay. So is this like the open where you're competing against everybody in the in, world? Yeah, in regions division? and world. Okay. But, and in your categories as well. Do they do the military and all uh, that stuff? I don't think so. I'll have to look. Okay. Um, but in the world page for 35 to 39 men, mm-hmm. there is only, there's four or seven pages of athletes. For the world? Yeah. Okay, that's not a lot. No. When you and consider that when you're doing the open, there's female yeah. now female a lot of pages open, uh, which is our your your high level athletes yeah okay. up to thirty you know up to thirty five or thirty four mm-hmm. um, I think they only have one page really yeah fifty or fifty teams in the central east that's it it's pretty fifty great. fifty wow that's not a lot no hundred athletes in the central east. So I, huh. you have only have until Monday to register. So I'm almost wondering if this fallout from all the crap, from all the changes that are mm-hmm. coming to the CrossFit yeah. Games, if people are like, you know what, I won't do your series. I'm just going to wait to do Wadapalooza here in the one of the qualifying events. Yeah, it's like 11 days away. So screw oh yeah, you. The, yeah, because they pushed screw the, you CrossFit. <laughs> they pushed the qualifier. They pushed up. it back. Yeah, or back. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, with Wadapalooza and, and Granite Games, they have the online qualifiers for the. Um, Individual. Elite, or what, depending on which event. In, individual starts in 11 days, and then team qualifi- qualification starts a month after that. Okay. So, yeah, it's they, they have your Elite RX, RX division mm-hmm. uh, in that as well. So, getting back uh, on track here, because, you know, we randomly go off track. But you were playing Xbox, relaxing, sitting there, you know, dogging on 14 year olds and then all of a sudden this whole this owning them uh, <laughs> owning them i'm telling you all night the show idea came to mind yeah um you know clicks inside of a gym are a major issue still to this day i thought maybe they went away mm-hmm. they really did and uh so unfortunately and fortunately we get members from other gyms and it's still prevalent because mm-hmm. we're in our own little bubble, in, in essence. I don't live in bubbles, but our gym, like, you know, we what goes on outside ours, it, it doesn't affect us. Like, we live inside of our own community. Uh, we're not afraid to branch out into the community. Inside of our own community, we, we set a precedence. Boom. This is what we want to do from, you know, our direction as a gym. And then our members, this is what we say, hey, this is our direction. This is the direction we want to go. This is our community. That's what we've done from the get go. Mm-hmm. If you want to be a part of it, we want you. If you don't, that's okay. Mm-hmm. But you know, we've set a precedence. And no clicks, no drama, none of that crap. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, I've talked. I don't know how many people I've talked to. It's the same thing. People are separating themselves from the majority, and or they're talking to their friends and talking trash about other members behind their back, mm-hmm. and then being cool with them too up front. Like it's. It, man, the last the last three gyms I was at before coming here was all clicky. It was, you know, groups segre- or separating themselves from the majority and then run their mouths and talking smack and then smiling to your face and giving you a high five right after the workout. It's mm-hmm. like, it's just ridiculous. And I think that it's something that crushes your community, which is why I say it clicks a driving force behind a bad community mm-hmm. i think that there are certain things that can set your community to uh, i don't know be inclusive or not i mean i 
I get all the drop-ins that we do get because we're close to the airport. Um, and we're freaking awesome. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> no. Is, is that what's on your Facebook? Yeah, that's what Close to the airport and we're, we're awesome. And we're freaking awesome. <laughs> but no, people come in. We do get we do get a lot of compliments on our community. So it, it just it sparks my like, why? Yeah. Well, why? Why, why, why do you say that? Yeah. yeah. And it's the same stuff. It's like, man, I walked in and people said hi to me. Mm-hmm. They didn't just stare a hole through my skull. Mm-hmm. Like. It's not about being friendly because what I see it if there's friendliness and then there's clickiness. A lot of times when people are clicky, they're they're territorial. They're like, This is like I own this and then you know like you can't sit at my table at lunch type deal. Exa- that's exactly what it is. You okay. can't use my barbell or you know, you can't you know just stuff like that. Like right? <laughs> just the most stupidest is that even a word? Territorial. Yeah. It was stupidest. Yeah, I, we, we'll use that. We're, I'm using it. I'm, well, that I'm, that and progressible. Those are the two words that we that's use That's my next act, yeah. tattoo. I'm going to get the old tramp stamp across the back. <laughs> stupidest. Uh, anyways, hearing these stories, it kind of like, it, it brings me back to like some really bad days in our gym. Like, and I'm not going to lie. When the very first gym we were part of, we were in a clique. I didn't even know it. Like, mm-hmm. I, I didn't talk smack about no nobody like behind their back because you guys know how i am mm-hmm. but they did but i accepted it and that's what made me part of it like i would hear i would hear say you run your mouth about someone mm-hmm. inside our community inside of our gym and i listened to it and i just kind of go along with it or whatever it wasn't so much that you accepted it, it's just you didn't do anything about it okay that's better but acceptance is just as well as um prolif- or you you're not doing anything to stop it so therefore, you're part of the problem. Yep, I, I definitely was, and you know, I, I would, I would like, why do you say that? Or I would say small things like that, but I never really said, "Hey, yeah, shut that's the hell, not cool. yeah, shut yeah. the hell up." What are you doing? Like these are your members, mm-hmm. and uh, so you can get sucked into it and not even know it because I didn't know it until I was out of it, and I was like, "Holy crap!" Mm-hmm. Like I'm a douchebag, <laughs> and I should have never, I, I should have realized it. But sometimes you don't, and I think that's another reason why I wanted to talk about this is. Sometimes you really don't know. You may be, you may do things that are like every day, and then you just don't, you don't realize that you're part of the problem and not the solution. And I think when you're talking about situations like that, like in your case where you, you were in the clique but didn't do anything about it. Sometimes with people's personalities, you know, like we talk about confrontation yeah. all the time, and con, you know, and, and how, how we agree there's a difference between confrontation and conflict. Mm-hmm. Um, Sometimes people just don't take that confrontational type approach to things like that. Hey, you shouldn't say that about uh, Sally <laughs> because that's not cool. Sally is really trying her hardest to be here every day. You know, celebrate the fact that she's even here. Don't sit there and trash talk her because she can't do double unders after being here for three years. Right. Did, you, did you know she had her knee replaced? Yeah, and it you goes know. back to what you said last episode was um – Uh, when people when people make the comment, I'm so glad they're gone. Mm, okay, you know what I mean. Like it, it's right in line with that. Like if if you're glad they're gone, what were you thinking about them while yeah. they were here? And and, and that's kind of what it. Maybe that kind of is what flipped the switch because I've always, you know, we address this from day one in our community, like our training course. It's our expectation of members. We have certain things that we expect from them, mm-hmm. and we tell them what they can expect from us because I think that a relationship like that. It goes both ways. Like, you can't just come in and use my ass. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We have certain things that are expected, and we're not, it's not that we're being, it's nothing crazy. Leave your attitude at the door, no clicks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, You know, accountability, standard of movement, but those are important to us, important to our community. That's why I say we have a bubble. And I, you know me, I I hate bubbles. Like, I think people live in a bubble are nuts, but we have to have bubble people because they keep, People like me, like kind of sane, because uh, I don't. Because you know they think everything is like rainbows and butterflies. Uh-huh. And I'm like, this world will snap your neck in yeah. one second as soon as you like, step outside yeah. of that border, and it's gonna be someone you know, and mm. you know what I mean. So, and so to hear this on the outside again is just kind of like I can't believe it's still an issue because, in all honesty, when people started CrossFit, there was two big knocks against it. Like this is back in the day. It was a cult. It was a cult. Yeah, and it was clicky, mm-hmm. like. The cult has kind of – I don't even talk about it at our white, um, in our training course anymore. And I had to five years ago 
almost because I, it was it was still defined. it was out in front of everybody yeah, it was still yeah. defined as it's a cult like atmosphere mm -hmm. and i'm like yeah we all enjoy doing things together we all we, enjoy suffering together to make are, ourselves better humans we all like to work out we like to push ourselves to the limits mm -hmm. and um we like the results and we, we're like-minded people because typically people who do CrossFit are, they have that common thread, that the common ground mm -hmm. of CrossFit. So you're like-minded because you like that crazy stuff, right? So yeah, I guess we are a cult, but I'm, we're a pretty cool cult. You know, we're not like yeah. David Koresh <laughs> <laughs> burning down buildings and shit, yeah. you know, but, you know, so it kind of, I, I can't believe it's still around to be honest, but I am not joking. I'm not joking. One out of every two that I get that come in, talk about it, mm -hmm. that are in from another gym, that are dropping in. I just cannot believe how people aren't clicky and everybody talks to them is the, the key words that I get that, you know, not just a couple people, you know, they're friendly. But like I said, I think that's separate. I think it's completely separate. You can be friendly and in the click because they're usually friendly to your face and stab you in the back when you're not there. What is it, Mean Girls? Yeah, the <laughs> yeah, the plastics. <laughs> On Wednesdays we wear pink. Hey, I have teenagers, okay, so that's why I know all this stuff. I don't so have teenagers. Don't, don't I've judge seen me. that. I like movies like that's pretty cool. I like stuff like that, but whatever. Now, some of the things we've talked about in terms of gym ownership is there's some commonalities in the respect that not a lot of owners have a business background. And to yeah, add on to yeah. this, I would say a lot of owners don't have any background, experience, or training in leadership. Yeah. And with that, that's really good. You the, said that the, because you don't, people won't talk about that. They talk about the financial side mm -hmm. and then the programming and training side. Mm -hmm. They don't ever talk about the leadership side. And I think that's something, hell, we should do a damn podcast. We'll do, we'll do, we should honestly, because I think what you're about to hit on is going to be huge. And the reason why I bring up, bring up the leadership piece is because in the military and you know, I know I, we talk a lot about the military, but we love our military. Yeah. We, like. yeah but, but it's, it's where I can, you know, I've been in the military for 44 years. You know, I was born into it. So it's, you know, call me brainwash, call me whatever you want, but I've learned a lot of things in it that have been useful tools uh, as a child, as a service member, and now as a retiree. And one thing when I've observed bad cultures in gyms, it's because there is a lack of understanding of, basic leadership principles yeah um you know having a clearly defined expectations of behavior um doing what you say you're going to do uh treating people with dignity and respect those little things go a long way into the contribution of a positive culture when people don't understand the negative impacts of clicks then, like we said, you're not necessarily endorsing it, but in not doing something about it yeah. and allowing it to happen, you're in turn saying it's okay. Just like the rep shaving stuff, right? It's Sometimes you can see it and you don't say anything about it, and then the ownership may not mm -hmm. know about it, which they should. Now, if you tell them about it and it's bothering you and it's affecting the community because that's what you're hearing, mm -hmm. then you address it, right? But if you don't, guess what happens? It continues. And we'll, let's tap into that a little bit. So when we originally did that episode, before we even talked about it, my thought process, because the way Mo's brain works is like, well, if they want to shave, if they want to cheat themselves on their fitness, that's on them. Mm -hmm. I don't care. But once we started talking about putting on my leadership hat, yep. if I'm allowing this to happen, I'm telling all these other people that I'm not having these conversations with that rep shaving is okay. Yeah. And if I'm proliferating that and in theory rewarding that person because they can write their numbers on the whiteboard, then I'm, am I promoting it? Right. Yeah. Maybe we talked because you know, a lot of gyms will put accountability across the, mm -hmm. their gym somewhere. But what does accountability mean to that person? Yeah. You know, again, you know, through the course of my career, at certain intervals, I was required to take leadership courses. And those leadership courses were the same courses that my mother took, that my father took, my wingmen took. Because, I mean, there's slight evolutions in the curriculum, but we all learn certain things at certain times. CrossFit owners, there's no professional development stream. You can go and you can learn how to use, you know, a particular brand of software to make your finances more streamlined. Yeah. You can go to a programming seminar 
and someone can teach you about how to do intelligent programming for groups or individuals. But there's, I think n- they skipped that one. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Just buy it. But just buy it. Yeah. But there's no formal developmental ladder to no. say, hey, within your first three years of CrossFit ownership, you should take this course. Okay, once you've gone here, you should take this course. If you're thinking about branching off and adding these type of elements, you should take this course. Because, and again, you know, the very minimal libertarian stances that you and I both take, CrossFit right. in, in its the essence smallest. is very libertarian. You know, the yeah. HQ says, you know, you pay your affiliation fee. You can use these words. You can put these things. You can say these uh, phrases. After that, um, I'll see you next year when your three thousand dollars is due. And they don't even see me, Mo. <laughs> <laughs> I get an automated email. Mm-hmm. You know, I see it in the owners. You you've nailed it. Like leadership is lacking in certain aspects. I know owners that are lacking it, and I hear about owners who lack it because um, you don't have to have you don't have to go to the military. You don't have to. Um, have a background in law enforcement or, mm-hmm. but let's say you played sports. Are mm-hmm. you that, are you a leader of your team or are you a follower? Are you a leader and you set the precedence? Are you one that don't care what the precedence is and just, cause you're good, mm-hmm. you know, naturally gifted, naturally yeah. gifted. Everything's always just kind of fell into place. And then when you actually have to work for something and you, it's a struggle, you don't know how to do it. And I've seen that, oh, you know, I was a baseball player as well when I was younger. But then as you start getting, as, as that funnel narrows down, you know, you start, you know, trying to go to college and play baseball or football or whatever. And then there's 12 other guys that are just as good as you, if right. not better. Yep. And you're no longer stratified because you were the stud, you were the pitcher, you were swinging 400, yep. you know, you were... You were, hit, you were getting 30-30 every year, you know, 30 home runs, 30 stolen bases, and now everybody that you're playing with, you know, is just as good as you. That can be emotionally challenging for people because, well, wait, I, I'm not special anymore. Not not challenging. It's catastrophic mm-hmm. because – and, and, I, and I see it with my, at my son's college because there were a lot of kids that uh, went to his college that I remember hit my son playing against, and halfway through training camp, they're gone. Yep. And right. I'm like – whoa he was an amazing athlete in high school why is he not there he's like and my son just like he just he said he didn't he didn't like it anymore he was too he said it was too much like work that was the yeah. one phrase i remember that my son told me that one of the kids said he's like it's too much like work they're bitching out mo's what's up they don't like to be challenged and i think that's what happens is you get crossfit so easy to start right and we have went down this leadership <laughs> and we see and we know it's easy to start because how many people do we have uh join for less than six months and then deuce out. Right. A lot. A lot. Yeah. yeah. And so a lot of gyms will start and it's like, well, I want to work out more or I want my own place to work out at. Like, mm-hmm. And we saw that a lot in you still see in, it. in the pre-Bach era. I mean, I think it was more prevalent than, or sorry, the Reebok era. I, I think it was more prevalent then like, oh, oh I want to go to the game. So yeah. I'm going to buy a gym. I'm going to work out work three out times time. a day. Yeah. You and can. then, and you can do that. Absolutely. But yeah. you got to keep the lights on. Yeah. You work out three times a day. Trust me. You're not, I don't care how good you are. It's not keeping your lights on. So the, the leadership literally affects everything from the, allowing the clicks the rep shaving, mm-hmm. everything like that. Um, but I just, we went totally way out. But but going back to the click thing, <laughs> yeah, you know, I like, think having the ability to identify that a click exists and it's causing a toxic, you know, toxicity in your community, you have to value the fact that you need to be a leader and invest in leadership skills. You know, leadership skills like you know, establishing the culture. If you, when you witness these things happening, stopping it. You know, saying, "Hey, this is not something we allow." You you, you realize what you guys are doing to my my community, you know, and taking ownership of that community. Now, granted, the community belongs to everyone, and everyone has a responsibility to maintain it and uphold it and keep the, keep the tribe, you know, together as a family. But if you're an owner that doesn't understand that, why would you do anything about it? Yeah. So I think when you kind of put this all together and you're looking at, you know, running a business as a gym owner, or even if you're a gym member, 
you have to take those leadership opportunities when they're presented to you. As a leader, it's probably every day that you have to be a leader. You have to, uh, like you said, do what you're going to say you're going to do, take care of people, those, those things that you always echo. But even as a member of a gym, you have leadership roles as well. You know, when something as simple as a stranger walks in and you say hi, you know, they don't, that person doesn't know who you are. You know, you're a leadership within the herd and you're trying to bring someone into your culture. The first thing you got to do is be nice. You know, it, it's hard. It, it's, I mean, some, and some people are just yeah. introverted and maybe them going up and saying hi to a stranger is like this huge emotional challenge for them. And like, and, and it's, and it, and it really lifts them up and helps them feel like they're part of the team and helping them do something. You know, something little like that. Yeah, but we're not asking them to stop them at the door and go get their rose petals <laughs> and lead them to the wad floor. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just say what's up or mm -hmm. hey. I, and we don't want the Abercrombie and Finch oh, oh. like bombard you. <laughs> what with, is it? The, the buckle challenge. Right. It's like my kids told me about that. I dude, didn't know it's it. It's ridiculous. Like if you're not familiar with that, the goal is to try and get to the back of the buckle store and out without anyone uh, saying anything to you. Which is impossible. <laughs> yeah, it's like, so, you're right. It, I just tell them, though, before we started, I actually had to send an email out to my own members. like, mm -hmm. and, and I don't like to send emails like this, but it's, it is, there's certain responsibilities that sometimes you get accustomed to, we go over and beyond for our people. Mm -hmm. Just is the reality of it. And I'm not saying they're doing it, the, they did it maliciously, but certain things that just, like I don't, I I don't mind cleaning, but don't don't overdo it. Like if your kid spills a popsicle all over our floor, mm -hmm. like I just found out, clean it up. Mm -hmm. Like or, you know, if the toilet paper is off the roll and there's no more on it, put mm -hmm. another one on. Like or if the trash is overfilling, like you don't have to take it out, but like, you know, we're going boom 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 in classes like. Mm -hmm. Just do that. Just help us out. Like if you if you have the opportunity, I'm not by all means asking you to clean or anything. But if you care so much about the community as you say you do, mm -hmm. right? Then you know turn the bathroom light off. You know, it, it's just the small little things. Like if your kids aren't here, but some kids made a mess in your parent. If if every parent helps clean up for that parent, you'll never have the issue and you'll have to do it less because people are taking care of you just as well. And mm -hmm. that's what we talk about is like, we want kids here and we love to have kids here, but they're not to make, you know, they, if they got crumbs all over the floor, don't expect me to clean it up. Mm -hmm. Cause that pisses me off. Right. That, that, that irritates me when you expect me to go over and beyond for your kids who they made a mess. Uh, -uh that we're not a daycare at that point. You know, I'm not charging you for your kids to be here. We're mm -hmm. not a daycare. It's actually something we want for the parents, but little things like that. I had sent an email out, and you know, some even even though we have a great community, you have you have to also just kind of pull it back in sometimes because you know how it is. Is it can it, everybody gets comfortable and it's kind of, everything gets laxed. Mm -hmm. And by no means are we a dictatorship here, but at the same time. It's the little things. If we if we allow it to go, guess what happens? It happens again. Now we got ants. Now we got bugs, and like, it just continues to happen over and over again. And then then what? Now it's become a custom. Mm -hmm. It's it's okay. You know, kids can destroy the upstairs room because they'll clean it up. We can leave you know food all over the floor because they'll clean it up. Or we don't have to put the toilet paper on the roll or put a new roll into it. Someone else will because they need it. Like. Mm -hmm. If you truly care about your community, then you're right. Take leadership and own that. And that's kind of what the email was about is, you know, hey, we do our best to give you the best and we give you everything that we can. But we, we also, need you to do your part. Yeah. Just nothing crazy, though. You're like you get like I was telling Mo, like people use the GHD on the extra work and they their hands are covered in chalk, covered in yeah. chalk because they're going back and forth and. Next thing I know, I'm 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 walking, and I'm like, what the heck is going on? Like this, it's completely covered in chalk. Like, you know, take 30 seconds to wipe that off when you're done using the equipment. Like things like that is just, 
it's small, but it's big because small always, like we talked the last episode, all small things equal to big things. So one of the things I've heard is like, uh, stepping over the dead body. So if you let things happen, you let things go and you don't do anything about it, you're not helping the situation. You know, you see someone knock over the chalk bucket, you know, in the middle of a workout, sometimes things happen. They don't know, you know, or just sometimes things happen, especially a new athlete. Like they knock over a chalk chalk bucket bucket. And you think that they just murdered someone yeah. like they're like, oh, my God, mm-hmm. I can't believe they're they're picking up every last crumb. I'm like, just keep working out. We'll yeah. get it. But uh, you get members like Jenna and she just kicks it over on purpose <laughs> just to piss me off. And she just shrugged <laughs> like, yeah, I got you. But, you know, maybe you had some tape fall off your hand while you're in the middle of a workout. And sometimes you just forget. But then. Does that make it any better? Like if I walk by to go put my barbell up and I see that little nubby of tape on the ground and just let it sit there. <laughs> the thumbs. Know. Yeah, I pick people's thumbs up yeah. often. And, and do I get pissed off about it? No, because I'm sure there's plenty of times when, you know, like a Band-Aid or something has popped off or I've left my wrist wraps in the middle of the floor and, and, and went home because my mind just isn't right. And, you know, I'm hungry and I'm focusing on trying to get home so I can spend time with my wife. You know, I don't know what's going on inside of everybody's head, but you can't just look at something and just let it be, you know. No, you can. I mean, you, it happens. Well, and, and and, but this is most speaking. I'm talking oh, to, yeah. to the listeners out oh, there. Yeah. You can't just let that go. You know, if you love what it is that you have within your facility, protect that. Yeah. You know, d- don't just assume that because someone that there's a there's a there's a nubby on the ground that someone did it on purpose. You saw it. That's an opportunity for you to take a role in preserving your community and just pick it up and throw it in the trash. Yeah. Cause I'll tell you as soon as I'm done with the workout and say it really sucked. First thing I'm doing, I'm on my back rolling that tape off my thumbs mm-hmm. and I almost, I forget it sometimes. And like, I'll go cause I'm getting ready to train class. I'm like going to put deodorant and change shirts to come back on. My little thumbs will still be out there and I'll go get them. But mm-hmm. like, yeah, I mean, if you add that and then you have good leadership then everything flows. You know what I mean? It it just functions. So it's more well oiled. Like these little hiccups that you get that you can have, like if your leadership's lacking or your members are lacking in their leadership, it causes these rifts inside the gyms. Like, you know, we talk about the, the smallest bit of animosity starts with that resentment. It does. Mm -hmm. And then that just, then it happens again. You're like, that's twice this week. Mm Mm-hmm. Now it's like two really small little deals, really not. Now they start compounding like, all right, so five times this week I've picked up people's thumbs. Now I'm trying to figure out what color that is. And I'm starting to watch people wrap their thumbs, come and find out who's leaving them on mm-hmm. there. You know, just like it starts building up. It really doesn't have to. Just mm-hmm. do your roles on both ends. Yeah. And I think to kind of wrap everything up today, uh, it's a, uh, a poem that someone once read to me. And it's called, Whose Job Is It Anyways? The story is about four people named everybody, somebody, anybody, and nobody. There was an important job to be done, and everybody was sure that somebody would do it. Anybody could have done it, but nobody did it. Somebody got angry about that because it was everybody's job. Everybody thought anybody could do it, but nobody realized that everybody wouldn't do it. It ended up that every, everybody blamed somebody when nobody did what anybody could ha- could have done. So just pick up the tape. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you just say that instead of reading that? Damn. <laughs> that's like, how much could a woodchuck chuck a woodchuck could chuck a wood? No, that's really good because I think that's what happens. Well, if I'm if I don't do it, somebody else will. Yeah. And then if somebody else does it, they're like, well, why didn't they do it? And you're right, that goes back and forth and it sounds like a really frustrated CrossFit owner wrote that poem. <laughs> um, yeah, there's no, there's, I, I can't find the per, the name of the person that wrote that poem, but it it, it, it speaks a lot to what we've talked about today. Yeah, I get, leadership is so important, man, across the board in life and in, 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 and as an owner, as a person, it's it's be that person that that goes over and beyond and takes takes it on head first. And if you're not that type of person like we talked about, it's okay, but you still have responsibilities. Mm-hmm. Just because you're not leading from the front doesn't mean you don't You're have, not a leader. Yeah. That you're not a leader. You're just not, you know. You're every, a different kind of leader. Because I tell you what, a pack of wolves, dude, they'll, they'll all 
rip your damn arms off, mm -hmm. right? But they only follow one, and mm -hmm. that's because that that one will rip them off and then chew them up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, regardless, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. they all are vicious, and, mm -hmm. they, and they have to they have to fight to live. Could we say some are more viciouser than others? Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Don't make fun of me, Mo. You got these sweet poems. I'm sitting here. I'm struggling because I don't have my iPhone. It has proper grammar kind of built into it. Uh, no, I mean, I like where this kind of where it ends because it's frustrating me as a leader when I see other people in leadership roles not lead their people mm -hmm. because guess what? I hear about it and you hear about it and mm -hmm. we just talk about like – this podcast has just can, continues to fall, like evolve in the fact that and it's not evolving. It's just, it's, it's the stuff, stuff that we hear that. That we hear from random people. We don't solicit any of this stuff. When people talk to us about negative experiences, like I don't run up to a brand new member and say, Hey, what's the shittiest experience you had at your last Fox? <laughs> no, they come to you. you yeah. Know? I mean, and I guess that's kind of what brings us up is it, it sucks to see other leaders not doing things because there's always fallout and the fallout mm -hmm. are their members. And I take it, it sucks, even though I don't outside of my gym, it doesn't matter, mm -hmm. but it does suck to see. And it sucks to hear. And it sucks. I hate when people have to go through that. Mm -hmm. And I think that if you can, if we could help change a culture or change a community community, be like, you know, Hey, I do do those things. Or I am that person, you know, just like when Oliver went to that gym. Oh, that gym in Columbus. Yeah. yeah. And it completely changed that culture for that, that class. Yeah. So that class now put weights to put all their stuff away mm -hmm. until the last person's finished. And they never did that. And they thought it was like an they alien. It was a game changer. Yeah, it was yeah. like an alien showed up inside their gym yeah. and, um, gave them the meaning of life. And, yeah. uh, now what will, will happen? They all do that. And now what happens when that next class comes in and, sees and they see it? that? Yeah. And then the class before them, like now they, like say they're they're doing extra work and like what are they doing yeah. yeah like you don't know you don't know what your small little thing that you do what the impact is going to have mm -hmm. on the entire community as a leader and that's the thing it's i am sm i'm like I, i've never been into small details well for the first part of my life the back half so far i have been and it's because i do know how much those small details mean it's you know, if we just left all the little thumb tape on mm -hmm. the ground or we left all the crumbs on the floor and we didn't take care of the small issues mm -hmm. as they happen, well, we'd have a messy gym. Mm -hmm. Well, people don't like that. So for this week's call to action, do something extra. Do something, you know. Without being asked. W without being asked. Yeah. You know, just, just do something extra. You, you know, it, whether it's greeting. A, if, you're, if you're that person that's just super quiet and never greets a new person, go say hi. You know, if you see a nubby on the ground, pick it up. You pick know, that sweaty nubby up. If you see the chalk bucket's empty, go grab a new block. Keep it simple, and those little things will add up to to mountains. It does because, like, it is infectious. It is and contagious. When people see you go the extra mile, mm -hmm. they're like, "Damn, I can do that." Yeah, that's easy. Or and now it's a, now it's a game. How fast can someone change a toilet paper roll? They're in there just using the last bit of toilet paper so they can. Like a slot machine. Just yeah. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> but no, yeah. I think that's a great call to action. I, I don't know how you post that, but you don't have to. Mm -hmm. I Just do it. Yeah. Do it because no one's watching. I think the things that you do when people aren't watching. Are the things that mean the most. Yeah. All right. I think that does it for this week. We bored Jenna. She's yeah, freaking Jenna's yawning. bored, yeah. Wow. <laughs> All right, that brings this week's episode to a close. I'm Mo and I'm out. See you guys. listening to the one more rip podcast you can follow us on facebook and instagram at one more rip podcast or on twitter at can i get one more or shoot us an email at can i get one more at gmail.com <laughs>